hear me? Okay. That would be helpful. <laughs> what? Um, good. Well, I don't know. I don't remember. My, my student gave it to me. Good vibes. Yeah, good vibes. She, and she did, well, she, she gave me this whole thing, so I just put it on. Yeah, it's very loving. Yeah, okay. Did he?
on that third one. Also, we have a whole lot of other things starting up as well. We had our first day of Sunday school this morning. Uh, and we have a bunch of sign-ups out in the narthex if you would like to participate in uh, trunk or treat uh, and hand out treats and decorate your trunk for Halloween. Uh, and there's a sign-up for serving or food packing ministry over with the Islamic Center in October. Uh, lots of sign-ups and uh, crafts, foils, baskets, workshop, lots of things. We got a whole page of announcements today, so please take a look at that. Uh, and if you have any questions, just reach out to one of the people you see leading, and we'll figure it out. Are there any other announcements that anyone wants me to lift up this morning? Thank you, Sheila. So Pastor Gary Logan, uh, who used to serve here between Jim Coker and who? And George Matson. His wife, Sandy, is in long-term care in North Carolina. Uh, so please keep her in your prayers. Did I get that right? Okay. Thank you. All right. Anything else? All right, as Christian community, we are also called to celebrate and grieve uh, and lift each other in prayer and to do that together. So in light of that, does anyone have any celebrations or prayer requests or anything they would like to share with the congregation? All right. I think we had four birthdays last Sunday. We really go in rhythms here. All right. Seeing nothing further, uh, I invite you to continue with a moment of silence and contemplation as we enjoy our prayers. I invite you to rise. We gather in the name of the Father and the Son 
and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by Christ's authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We join in our gathering song, Lord of Glory, You Have Bought Us. Thank you. 
that we may walk in your ways of wisdom and understanding as servants of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And all God's people shouted, Amen. Amen. I invite you to be seated as I invite forward our children. And Barb Kissling, who is going to give the children's message this morning. Uh, Barb is our director of or co-director of kids hope which is our stewardship our outreach of the month this month today how about we talk about how much Jesus loves us. Do you think that would be a good idea? Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, I found a book that I want to share with you because this is a pretty special book. When I was a little girl way long ago and I lived in California, I had a favorite song, and this book talks about that. So we're going to look for that today. Okay, this is the cover of the book, and I found this book in our church library. So if you ever want to look at this book, 
if you go in the library uh, with your mom or dad, or you can have Mrs. Linkowski help you, you can find the book and read it again if you, if you want. Okay, when you look at this cover, what, what do you see? Anything in particular? Mm -hmm. You see Jesus, all right? Is Jesus the man in the middle there? Yeah, okay. Who else do you see on the cover of the book besides Jesus? Do you see some? What do you see, Aurora? You see children, yes, yes. And, oh, is that Jesus? Jesus, yeah. And then the children. Yes, Jesus, very good. Wow. Now, do you think those children know Jesus? Does it look like, what are they doing? Are they doing anything in particular? They're spending time with Jesus, and what was the other thing? One of them is holding a cat, yeah. And in Jesus' hand, he has one boy on his lap, and he has uh, his arm around the girl. They sort of look like they like Jesus an awful lot, or maybe even love Jesus. Is that what you think, too, that Jesus, maybe these children love Jesus? Mm -hmm. And I think Jesus is very welcoming here because he's allowing the children to stand close to him and probably listen to him. The word welcoming is, is a... Do you know the word welcoming? Have you ever heard that before, welcoming? It's like when you greet somebody, somebody comes to your house and you open the door and you say hello. You say hello, yep. That's, that's welcoming. That, that's giving your, your company a, some company. Uh, and I think that's what Jesus is doing here. Okay, do you think we should open the book up and look up inside a little bit? We're not going to read the whole story because it's too long. But we do have this right here. We've got some children in bed and some children like in their sleeping bags, I think, or maybe blankets. Okay. Do, can you find any children that are praying? Where do you see children that are praying? Do you see them above the bed? Yeah. And then there's a little boy over here that's praying. How can you tell they're praying? You can tell by how their hands are folded and their eyes are closed. Yeah, that's, that's a good way. And some other people are reading a Bible. You're right. Very good. Yes, he's got a Bible in his hand. Do you think maybe they're reading about Jesus in the Bible? I think so too. Yeah. Okay, down, down at the bottom it says, Jesus loves me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. Yeah, you see a, a kitty in the picture too, don't you? Right. Okay, let's see if we can find some more pages. Oh, what are the children doing in, in here on this page? Okay, some children are eating their food. You're right. Some are feeding the dog, and some are get, just getting ready for the day. Okay. You like the seeing the little dog? Yeah. Yeah, there's a, a dog there, isn't there? Yeah, you like that. Okay, let's see what it says. It says, little ones to him belong. Him is, is Jesus. So little ones would be children belong to Jesus. They are weak, but he is strong. Who do you think he is? Who's strong? Jesus. You're right. Jesus is strong. Okay. The little ones that might be weak are maybe children that need some help. Like this little girl here, this boy is helping to put her shoes on. And over here, this little girl is helping that little boy put his sweatshirt on. So that's maybe how they're, they're weak, that they, that they need some help. Okay, all right, you think we should turn the page? Find out what's happening over here? Ooh, what is happening on on? this part. Do you have a guess? What do you think? Going to school. Yes, I, I agree with you. I think it looks like these children are going to school. Can you tell what this little girl is doing? She's not so little. What do you think, Sophie? Reader, reader. 
Right. You think it's a crossing guard watching the other children going to school so they don't get near a car or a bicycle that they'll be safe. Okay? Yeah. So she's, this is her way of sharing Jesus' love with other people by being a crossing guard. And that's a good way to show your love for Jesus. Okay? Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Do you know a song that has... What, what do you think, Sophie? <laughs> the song, Jesus Loves Me. Right. Okay. Oh, you see the ball. Yeah, there's a ball in the picture. You kick the ball? Yes. Okay. Oh, and here it goes, Sophie. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. And what do you see in this pic- these pictures? What, what, are the, what are the children doing? Anything in particular? Zoe? Sophie? Yeah, at the table, they're drawing and cutting out hearts. Anything else you see the children are doing in this picture? Yes, Sophie. Okay, they're looking at the animals that they have in the class. Right, okay. And over here, this boy is reading a book, and, he, and this girl is listening. So they're all doing things that show Jesus' love by reading a book to a, another student. Yeah, you see the animals, don't you? And when we take care of animals, we're, we're showing our love from Jesus that we want to help the earth and the animals on the earth and to help other people. So these boys and girls are, are showing lots of ways that we show how we love Jesus. Okay, so... The words on all the way through here do come from the song, Jesus Loves Me. Do you know that song, Jesus Loves Me? When I was a little girl a long time ago, I used to sing this song. And do you think you know it a little bit, Jesus Loves Me? You want to sing with me? Now, I don't ever sing because I have a terrible voice. So don't, be, don't let me scare you <laughs> if my voice sounds terrible. But we'll try and sing it, okay? We could sing. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. (laughs) Well, thank you for singing with me. Yes, Sophie. I like paper clips. Sophie is asking why there's so many paper clips. Because I didn't want to go to all the pages. Because that would take too long. Okay, yeah, to mark, tell me where I was wanting to go. Okay, so what we want to remember is how much Jesus loves us and how welcoming he is to us. Okay, all right, why don't we end with a prayer. If I can have you fold your hands and we bow our heads and close our eyes. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving us. Thank you for welcoming us. Be with us always. Amen. Thank you. (laughs) Okay. Oh, boy. The first reading is from Jeremiah. It was the Lord who made it known to me, and I knew. Then you showed me their evil deeds. But I was like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter, and I did not know it was against me that they devised schemes, saying, Let us destroy the tree with its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living, so that his name will no longer be remembered. But you, 
O Lord of hosts, who judge righteously, who try the heart and the mind, let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. Word of God, word of life. We'll do the psalm responsively. This side, the lectern side, will do the odds. That side will do the evens. Save me, O God, by your name. In your might, defend my cause. Hear my prayer, O God. Give ear to the words of my mouth. For strangers have risen up against me, and the ruthless have sought my life those who have no regard for God. Behold, God is my helper. It is the Lord who sustains my life. Render evil to those who spy on me. In your faithfulness, destroy them. I will offer you a free will sacrifice and praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. For you have rescued me from every trouble. The second reading is from the book of James. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness, born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it. So you commit murder, and you covet something and cannot obtain it. So you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Word of God, word of life. Jesus and the disciples went on and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But the disciples did not understand what Jesus was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when Jesus was in the house, he asked them, what were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. Jesus sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. 
And whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated at this time. The disciples had a rough day with Jesus in our reading from Mark. Jesus said confusing and scary things about how he was going to be betrayed, murdered, and after three days be raised from the dead. And the disciples were too scared to ask Jesus what he meant by that. I think they may have been going, well, maybe if we just ignore these scary things, they'll just go away. Anybody ever thought of that? Not really a good strategy, but it's one we as humans really like to employ. And interestingly enough, in all the disciples' earthly wisdom, they changed the conversation to be about very human things. Which of them is the best disciple? Now obviously Jesus, the Son of God, overheard their conversation. And when they get to town, he casually confronted them about it. Jesus essentially asked them, Since you didn't want to talk about my upcoming death, what'd you talk about instead? And wouldn't you know it, they don't respond at all because they're too ashamed. They're so ashamed of their petty squabbling. The disciples made some poor choices today out of fear and anxiety and competition. How many of you have made poor decisions when feeling afraid, anxious, or competitive? We got this thing in Michigan about Michigan State and U of M. You guys are aware of that. How many of you have maybe made poor decisions in regard to that competition? Yeah, no, I never made a poor decision about that. So Jesus' response to his disciples, I think, is something important for us to look at. His response to the disciples models wisdom born of gentleness and patience. He didn't berate them for not getting it. He didn't shame them for their conversation about who is the greatest. Jesus simply redirected their topic of conversation for wisdom and truth. He taught them the greatest in God's kingdom are those who serve. And those who welcome and care for children and the vulnerable are those who literally welcome God. Jesus gently refocuses his disciples, their fixation on greatness, and uses that to point them towards service and welcome. Jesus shares his wisdom with the disciples through gentleness and and patience. Our reading from James had much to say about wisdom. The disciples' behavior and ours is called out. James wrote today, You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. Both of these are represented in our gospel lesson today. Jesus talked about how the religious leaders were going to murder him because Jesus was challenging their power, influence, and interpretation of Holy Scripture. And the disciples coveted this title of the greatest and engaged in disputes and conflicts. I imagine you can think of times in your life when you made similar choices to harm others to get what you want, to choose selfishness, without regard for the other. Just as Jesus teaches the disciples a different way, so too does James. James chapter 3, verses 16 and 17 says, For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. I invite you to hear that again. It's worth hearing. 
The wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. I'm going to invite you now into a time of hopeful dreaming, right? So just, I'm going to posit some things to you, and I want you to wonder what it would be like if this were true. I wonder what our political landscape might look like if we use this wisdom. Peace, gentleness, willingness to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality or hypocrisy. I wonder what it would look like if this is what we modeled our friendships after, our marriages our family lives, our workplaces, to value and exude gentleness, patience, mercy, and good fruits. In our society, these aren't really characteristics that are modeled as wise. How many of you growing up were taught being willing to yield is a strength? Anybody? Anybody? Not what I was taught growing up. Right? You, you better get your way or else your value is going to decrease. That's the, that's the American way, right? Or to be gentle? Who here thinks, or how many of you were taught gentleness? That's the key, that's the characteristic you should exude above everything else. Anybody? I see a couple of hands. Fabulous. Most of you, though, no, no. Mostly in the United States, a harsh word is more commonplace than a gentle one. And if we look at politics, or the news, or social media, or the internet, harshness is what is most common. And Jesus and James say today, that's not wisdom. It's not wisdom. Jesus models this for us today in our gospel with his disciples. Now, reminded, i got to remind you, these are the disciples who completely ignored his revelation about his upcoming suffering and death, and instead chose to fight amongst themselves about who's the greatest. Completely ignoring what Jesus was going through, the squabble about pettiness amongst themselves. And confronted with his disciples' lack, bold lack of empathy, Jesus chose to respond with the wisdom of gentleness and patience. I find it a beautiful thing that this wisdom that comes from above leads us toward loving behavior and action. If we are to embody this wisdom from above that is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. If we actually do this, it means that we love our neighbors, especially those who cause us difficulty. With this upcoming election, our human tendency to err on the side of selfishness, impatience, harsh words, and an unwillingness to hear other people is on full display. Uh, if you turn on a news channel, that's what you're going to get. But the wisdom from above calls us to respond differently. By following this wisdom, there is hope that we might actually be able to work together, to turn enemies into friends, to learn from others who are different from us, and to love our neighbors as we want to be loved. The wisdom that is from above makes space for love. The wisdom that is from above is pure, gentle, patient, willing to yield, merciful, bears good fruit, and is without partiality or hypocrisy. This wisdom leads us to welcome our neighbors, as Jesus instructs his disciples, not only to welcome children, but to welcome those of a different political affiliation. To welcome the stranger, 
to welcome the poor, to welcome the vulnerable, and to do so with gentleness, patience, and love. This is the wisdom that Jesus embodies. This is the wisdom that God wants us to learn. Through this wisdom, love is created. And this wisdom is what led Jesus to the cross, to his death, and to his resurrection. This wisdom led Jesus to give hope to the world that love conquers death. That eternal life will be given to you and to the world. And that through the loving wisdom of Jesus, creation itself would be in harmony. May you learn this wisdom. May we learn this wisdom as a congregation. May our country learn this wisdom. May the world learn this wisdom. Amen. I invite you to rise as you so desire and join in singing our hymn of the day, We Are Called. the whole church, let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, 
God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to be seated at this time, and I invite you into a posture of prayer. Uh, we are going to be praying today, and it's going to be a little different. We've been using receive our prayer as our response for a long time. Today, we're going to have a different one. We respond you, we invite you to respond to each petition with, Your mercy is great. You just want to practice? Your mercy is great. We got it. Drawn together in the power of the Holy Spirit. We pray with confidence for the church, God's creation, and all who are in need. Loving God, you welcome all at your table of grace. Instill in your church a spirit of humility and curiosity that we embrace all who seek you. We pray especially for ministries of hospitality reflecting your love, including Kids Hope USA, our Sunday school, and Adopt a Student. Hear us, O oh God. Creating God, you shape the world so there is more than enough for all. Curb our habits of overuse and guide us toward more sustainable sources of energy, food, and water. Hear us, O oh God. Gracious God, your peace brings justice and solidarity. Encourage peace among peoples, tribes, and nations. End violence and heal divisions in our country and local communities that together we might work for the good of all. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Healing God, you draw near to all who are in need. Bring wholeness to all who suffer, especially the Coker family. Sandy, Vara, Andrew, Hagman, Bob Smith, Art Lohr, the Skukora family, Don Newton, David Wigert, Louise Montag, Laura Sacida, Phyllis Anderson, Dale Harpstead, Leanna Greider, the Dawson Bagling family, Corbin Davis, Ashley White, Rich, Carol Jolene, Annalise Marks, Connor Hagman, Bruce Reinhold, Michael Kruger, Ed Manus, Carl Bennett, Joseph Kravitz, Kim Kravitz, and loved ones listed in today's bulletin. Transform economic, political, and social systems that oppress vulnerable people, especially systems of structural racism and generational poverty. Hear us, O oh God. Faithful God. Bless Pastors Emily and Zach, Bishops Eaton and Satterley, our ecumenical partners, Reverend Paul Buskis in the Congregation of Bethlehem Lutheran Church in Traverse City, and all congregations in our community. O oh God, transforming God, you accompany all through changes and transitions. Help us to see where you are calling this community to new ways of living the gospel promise. Assure us that even as change brings loss, it also brings hope and life. Hear us, O oh God. Merciful God, you embrace us on our final pilgrimage from this life. Accompany all who have died, console those who mourn, and at the last, show us the way to eternal life in you. Hear us, O oh God. We entrust these and all our prayers to you, Holy God, in the name of your beloved child, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. 
I invite you to rise and share signs of peace with one another. My son wants the piece to go on a little bit, I think. <laughs> we are going to continue our service with a commissioning of our kids' hope leaders. University of Lutheran Church is in partnership with Forest View Elementary School in Lansing. We began this partnership because we understood that God was calling our church to make a bigger impact in our community through intentional, long-term relationships. And it is our privilege to continue these relationships and form many more this year. At this time, I invite all of our Kids Hope USA mentors, prayer partners, and support team members to please come forward at this time. And you just line up right here on this large step, if you would. Uh, we, are, we are doing this portion of our service at this time in the service. Because these folks are offering their time uh, and their relationship and their love. Uh, both in service to God and to this elementary school. So we do this during the offering time of our service to highlight that that's what this really is. We can have more than one row here. We, we, can, we, can, we can cuddle up here if we need to. Kids Hope USA mentors and prayer partners, although the work you do each week may not be fruit for years to come, you are honoring God and representing our church well by your faithful service and outpouring of unconditional love. At the start of this new school year, we want to affirm and uplift you. 
praise your name. Thank you for your service in this way. Uh, if anybody else is interested in being part of this mentor uh, program, these are the folks you can talk to. And let's uh, encourage them with a round of applause and a friendly Thank you all. Uh, and our giving of the month is for Kids Hope, so it's to support this program. Yes, if there are children who would like to collect the offering, please come to the middle here.
Let us pray together. Blessed are you, O God, source of every gift of your creation. By these gifts and with our lives, help us to serve one another and all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. I invite you to hear this story of good news. In the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and we drink this wine, we proclaim the Lord's life, death, and resurrection until he comes again. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to be seated at this time for a few words of instruction. Here at University Lutheran Church, we practice open communion, which means if you are here, you are welcome at this table. Uh, The wisdom of Christ is one that is gentle and peaceable, but it is also one that is for all people. And that's why we practice this here. What Jesus Christ has done is for you. This meal is for you, and this love is for you. We'll have ushers dismiss folks from pews. So come to the middle. We'll give you bread. The next aisle out will be someone handing you a plastic cup in a tray. You can grab a cup. And then this is wine, and this is grape juice. So just indicate to the folks where you would, what you would like, and they will pour you a cup. And on either side are baskets to put your plastic cups in. Again, all are welcome at this table. This meal of love is for you. I invite my communion helpers to please come forward.
I invite you to rise. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Holy God, you have welcomed us to this meal and fed us with dignity at your table. Send us now to welcome others and to be at peace with one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give to you peace. Amen. I invite you to join in singing our sending song. in peace, serve the Lord. <laughs>